Okay, let's try and analyze the situation, a base jump and jumping off a skyscraper, graphically. Well, the first thing we need to think about is which way we're going to make our coordinates work. So we've got our building, the ground, someone jumping off the top. We could measure coordinates upwards or downwards. It doesn't really matter, the answers will come out the same either way around. For this example, let's use upwards. So we'll have height equals 0 here, height equals h at the top. Measure x upwards. That means the velocity and acceleration are going to be negative. You could do it the other way around. Your call. So what do we know? We've got three things we can plot. We can plot height, velocity, and acceleration. Now we know that we're starting at height h and we're ending at height 0. So somehow we have to get from there down to there. How about velocities? Well, we know we're starting at velocity 0, and we're going to end up at velocity, if it's a tall enough skyscraper, of about the terminal velocity. So we end, end up down there somewhere. How about acceleration? Well, acceleration is going to start off as g downwards, and at terminal velocity, the net acceleration is going to be 0, so it's going to end up up there somehow. So that's the question, how do we go from this point to this point and all these things? Well, let's think about it. Um, you could have almost any number of curves going from here to here, um, which is actually the sensible curve. Well, let's drop out those. Those are clearly not sensible. Now, probably the easiest way to think about this is to think about the acceleration, because that's going to be pretty straightforward. You're going to start off with g. To begin with, you're not going to move very slow, so it's going to stay g. But then as your velocity gets larger, the drag force is going to get bigger, which is going to drop your acceleration. Until eventually the drag force roughly matches the gravitational force, in which case your acceleration will tend out to be zero. So I'm not sure of the exact shape, but it's going to look something like that. Uh, maybe it'll look more like a straight line, some sort of curve like this from there to there. Okay, so now let's think about velocity. We know we have to get from here to here, but is it going to look like this or like that? So if that's a curve like this, that would mean to begin with you more or less hang in the air, and then you gradually build up speed downwards. Here you'd um, speed will build up rather rapidly and then plateau out, which is it actually going to be? Well, the trick here is to compare these two graphs. This graph, acceleration, is the rate of change of velocity. So A equals V dot, V prime, dV by dt. So that's telling us the slope of this. What we can see here is the slope is going to be the biggest it ever is down here, so it'll be the most negative slope and up here it's going to be least. So what we want here is a graph, a line, which has a big negative slope and then not much slope. So the only possibility is something that looks like this. So the slope here is the gradient, so we draw a tangent line here, and we need that slope to be quite negative, and we need the slope here to not be very negative, because we know that this curve is going to start off very negative and go up there. So only that curve can work. A curve like this would have a slope that to begin with was not very big and then very large. That would be an acceleration that went something like that, and that can't be true. So if we've got acceleration that goes something like that, or like that, or anything which starts off negative and ends up not very negative, then we have to have a velocity versus time curve that curves down steeply to begin with and then flattens out. And then we need position. So again, what's happening here? Is the position going to go something like this, or like that, or straight through? Well, once again, we know that this velocity curve is telling us the slope. Because velocity is equal to the rate of change of position. So we know that the velocity here is, is close to zero. So what that means is the slope here must be close to zero and the slope gets bigger and bigger. So what we need is a curve which starts without very much slope and then acquires a bigger and bigger slope. So it's going to curve something like that. So it's a tricky thing to think about, but by thinking about the physics, we can see that 
we need acceleration versus time goes something like this. Velocity versus time that starts off with a steep slope and then ends up with a flat slope. Position versus time which starts off with a flat slope and ends up with a steeper slope. Any mathematical solution that doesn't give us something like this will be wrong.